ever had as much value as the name of Jesus. Amen. A lot of names been written. Amen. There's a lot of basketball stars, football stars, boxers, racers. You can name the names are endless of the people's names in this world that's that's been named. Amen. And they're famous and popular, and people's forgot some of their names already. Some of them's already done been forgotten. I believe Michael Jackson passed away a few years ago, and and they ain't too many people mention his name much no more, Rick. And he was called the King of Rock. They called him the King of Pop or Rock, and they all glorified him as being the greatest rock and roller in all times. But uh, but he seemed to be getting but forgot about a little bit, Brother Kenny. Um, uh, but there's a man called Jesus. Amen. Won't ever be forgotten. Amen. Uh, amen. No matter what's been done, no matter what's been said or what's been told, uh, I don't believe the man Jesus will ever be forgotten about. Amen. Uh, and there'll always be somebody, Daddy, that'll be calling out on the name of Jesus. Amen. You see, Michael. Amen. Uh, and Michael. Amen. He died a little while ago. Uh, and he can't help nobody. Mr. Jackson can't no more. Uh, he may sing some songs that make him feel good. Uh, uh, but he can never remove a tumor, Daddy. Uh, he can never cause cancer to leave out of a body. Uh, he can never cause the lame to walk. Uh, he can never, amen, cause the blind to see. Uh, he can never cause the deaf to hear. Uh, uh, but there's a man called Jesus, amen. Uh, he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Uh, and above all, we can thank or ask, uh, according to the power that worketh in us, amen. Uh, amen. Pray for me that the Lord help us today. Uh, I'd like to go in the book of 1 Corinthians. The Lord help us, amen. Uh, uh, chapter number 3. Uh, I'd like to preach a little bit about a foundation, amen. Uh, and there ain't no other foundation, amen, that we can stand on uh, uh, but that of Jesus Christ, amen. Uh, uh, the Lord help us here. We'll read 1 first, uh, first Corinthians chapter 3. Uh, uh, maybe verse number 1 start out. Uh, amen. Preach a little bit what Paul was teaching here. And Paul said, I, brother, I could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For he said, Here for two, you are not able to bear it. Neither, he said, Yet are you now, are you able to bear? Or are you able? For you are yet carnal. He said, For whereas there is among you envy and Amen. And strives uh, and divisions. Uh, and are you not uh, a carnal and walk as men? Uh, uh, for will one say, I am a Paul, uh, and another say, I am a Paulus. Uh, uh, you are not. He said, Are you not carnal? Uh, he said, Who then is Paul? Uh, who is a Paulus? Uh, uh, but ministers uh, by whom ye believed, uh, even as uh, the Lord gave to every man. Uh, he said, I uh, have peace and I have planted. Uh, Apollos watered, but God give the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, and neither he that watereth, but God that gives the increase. And now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labors. Lord, help us today, God. Lord, to preach about your foundation, God. Your foundation ain't divided. Your foundation, Lord, ain't scattered. But the foundation of God stands the sure. Heaven is sealed, Lord. You said you knew them that were yours was he was yours. And let everyone name the name of Christ. Depart from iniquity, Lord. Help us today, God, to preach today, God. The foundation is Jesus today. And there ain't no other. Help us, Lord, today, God. Amen. To preach your word. To lost and divided world world, Lord, that they might find truth, God, and stand on your word, God, and make it to heaven. We can't, we can't make it, Lord, on our own way, and we can't make it on our own thoughts, Lord, or our own opinions, but we can make it on your foundation, Lord, your established truth, God, and we'll take it, Lord, and go with it, God. Help us anoint us, God, to preach, Lord, to feed somebody, Lord, to uplift somebody, encourage somebody, God, Lord, to Stay on that rock, Lord, and trust in it with all their heart, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. We thank you today for coming out. I thought about Paul here is preaching about carnal-minded people, Rick. He said they're carnal-minded, they're divided. Amen. That's the church today. If Paul was preaching today, he'd come to the churches and he'd say, you're so divided. Why are you so divided for? People are so divided. Amen. They had that problem back in the in, in just days too. Uh, they were so divided. Uh, they wanted
wanted to go out and worship other gods. And he said, why be you hauled amongst you, amongst two opinions? Why are there two of you? Why are you so separated? If God be God, serve him. If Baal be God, serve him. If Jesus be Lord, then let's serve him. If he be the foundation God, let's stand upon him, Rick. If he's the way, the truth, and life, let's trust in him and not ourselves. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be divided. I don't want to think some preacher's going to get me there or some member of the church is going to get me there or my ways will get me there. I want to trust in Jesus getting me there. He's my foundation now. And if I stand on him, I've got to build on him. And if I build on that foundation, whatever I build, the Bible teaches us that it'll be tried by fire and it'll stand. Our works will be tested of what we do with them, amen. But to Paul had this problem with the vision. So many people divided. Said, I'm of this and then I'm of that and amen. I'm of Jesus, amen, Brother Kenny. That's who I'm after, amen. I'm, I got saved by Jesus, Daddy. I didn't get saved. I'm, I love Brother George Neal, Daddy. I didn't get to know him a whole lot. I'm, but what time I didn't know him, Daddy, I remember down to a mammoth's funeral one day. I'm, I was down there and he was preaching mammoth's funeral, Rick. I'm, I come in there, amen, looking like I always do, Daddy. I'm, I'm living the life I know to live to serve Jesus, Rick, I'm, and not to serve man's eyeballs. And George Neal told me, said, son, I heard you've been preaching on the radio. And I said, yes, sir, I have. He said, what do you preach? I said, Jesus Christ, him crucified, and him risen from the dead. And daddy, you know what he told me? He said, keep on a preaching, son. I said, I plan on it, brother George. And that's all he had to say to me. I'm glad those people know what the truth is. Jesus Christ, him crucified, him risen from the dead. That's the only foundation you got to stand on. If you build your one with something else, it's going to fall apart. It won't stand on the day of judgment, amen. But if you build on Jesus, it'll be there when you get there. Church is divided today. They can't worship together, Rick. They can't come into one house hardly. Um, uh, Dad said the little homecoming service, they had a good services down there. Um, and the daddy said like people had their mind on the right thing. Um, if you get your mind on the right thing, amen. Um, uh, we can come into the house of God. Um, uh, we can worship, amen. Uh, we can praise God. Um, if I go there looking at somebody, um, uh, what they got on or what they don't have on, um, uh, what they're wearing or ain't wearing, um, how they showed up or didn't show up, Rick, um, I can't do not when I'm looking at you, but when I got my eyes on Jesus, Brother Herman, I can get into an office place. I can get into this place where I can call upon God and the prayer bells of heaven begin to ring and I can see God come down and begin to touch me and other people, amen. But as long as I got my eyes on you, I can't do anything. Peter was trusting in Jesus when Jesus said, step out of the boat. Peter saw them. They saw Jesus walking on the water, Daddy. And they, here comes Jesus, and they thought, it's a ghost. It's something out here on the water. Um, oh, Peter said, Lord, um, if it be you, um, I bid me to come unto you. Um, amen. Jesus said, um, uh, come. Um, amen. Peter, um, he didn't wait around a while. Um, and the Bible said Peter stepped out of that boat. Um, and Peter wasn't walking on concrete. Um, uh, Peter, wasn't, Peter wasn't walking um, on something that would hold him up. Um, he was walking on faith, um, on the word that said come. Um, that's what he was working on, Daddy, um, on the faith um, of the word that said come. Um, amen, if we'll walk in the faith, um, amen, of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, uh, we can go in faith and we won't seek on the way. Peter was walking and faith was doing good till he saw the winds and the and the boisterous of the sea and began to get his eyes on those things and faith began to seem small and the water began to seem big I believe Rick had had his faith on Jesus the whole time he kept right on walking on to him but even though he sunk daddy he cried out Lord save me and he found out Jesus hadn't disappeared he didn't walk past him daddy Woo! he didn't sink somewhere in the ocean but he said and immediately took him by the hand um, and they were back in the boat, amen. Um, uh, Jesus won't seek to leave you um, uh, when your faith fails a little bit. Um, uh, your faith to get weak at times, um, uh, but keep it in Jesus, amen. Um, if your faith fails you when you got in man, um, it won't ever return um, uh, because man will always fail you. Um, uh, they will never, amen, be there um, uh, to keep you when you need to be kept. 
but you can't be killed by nothing but by the power of faith. That's the only thing can keep you, amen. The word of God will have to keep you. If you're kept by something else, you'll be like these double-minded people here. Paul talked about them being envious, amen. You ever been to a church and people's envious of each other? Lord, have mercy, they can't sing a song without somebody tearing it up. Oh, Lord, they missed a tune. Oh, they shouldn't have been playing that guitar. Oh, their short sleeves, their sleeves was too short. I can't get in the spirit when your sleeves get too short, Danny. I can get in the spirit, Rick, if you didn't even have a shirt on. I don't need you to get it. No, 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 son, no, 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 no. Oh, to get into the spirit. I need Jesus to get into the spirit. I need God to come my way to get me into the spirit of God. I don't need somebody to get me there. If you come to church to get pumped at the prime before you can do something for God, oh, you waited too late and you need to get pumped and you need to get primed on Jesus and then come to church and daddy worship him with all of your heart. Amen. People's got so many things out there that separates the church, Brother Kenny, from who you're supposed to be. I'm supposed to come in here and love you. And whatever problem you got is supposed to be my problem. Amen. The Bible told us to suffer with one another. And when the weak is weak, you become weak. Amen. When you rejoice, I ought to rejoice with you. Amen. He even said comfort the feeble-minded. Amen. Them that don't even have a good mind. I'm supposed to comfort them and help them. Amen. People today, all they want is their self to have. If it ain't working out my way, Daddy, we'll close the doors. Well, Jesus ought to be the head of the house, not me, Rick. Jesus ought to be the head of the pulpit, not me. Jesus ought to be the head of the household, not me. Amen. When Jesus is the head, everything else will fall in order. Everybody else wants to be the head. Jesus, Paul talked about divisions. Talked about envy and being in the churches. Amen. They're so divided. He said, you're carnally minded. Carly minded people can't get spiritually in tune with God. They can't get spiritually tuned. Amen. They'll be like the wolves. Amen. In sheep's clothing. Amen. They'll come in to devour the flock. They'll run them off if they have to. Bless God. They don't belong in here. And let them go. I don't care if they leave or not. We ought to care. If I run off the sheep, I ought to care. I ought not be trying to run the sheep off. I ought to be ministering medicine to the sheep and transforming the goats into sheep. Amen. Uh, by the word of God. Uh, daddy, I was a goat at one time, uh, but I ain't a goat no more. Uh, I don't have to button now. Uh, now I can follow the land, the, the shepherd of the sheep, amen, and get where I need to be. Amen. So much division in the churches, amen. So many things. I didn't preach this, Becky, because of what you said earlier. I preach this because this is what I come with. As she was talking about earlier, well, earlier some things maybe she's encountered in her life. How people believe and think, we also have encountered that, amen. It don't matter what people believe and think. It matters what the Bible says. And that's what matters, Rick. If we don't get rooted and grounded and on the foundation of God, we'll let every wind and doctrine, amen, pass us off and throw us off. Out of while we'll be offended to God, and it won't be God's fault. I will be offended to God, Daddy. When man does something to you and lets you know God didn't offend you, you shouldn't have been following man no way. And man let you down. I don't get mad at God because God didn't do it to you. A man did it to you. If you're following man, you're going to get hurt. If you got your faith and trust in man, he's going to fall and disappoint you. But you put your faith in Jesus, he'll never let you down because he is the foundation on which we stand, amen. Division in a church is because people want to be patted on the back. People want to be the big eyes and nobody wants to be the little ewes. I'll be as little as they come. John the Baptist said, I got to decrease that he might increase. Amen. He said, let me be the least. Jesus said, he that's greatest in the kingdom must be the least, daddy of them all. Rick, they want the big paycheck. They want the fancy car. Buy me a nice house on the hill. Amen. You ain't the greatest servant. The greatest servant is he is lowly. He that don't have a whole lot. He may have a whole lot, but he's got a lot of humbleness. Amen. Man, 
uh, and his wisdom, amen, out loud rides. Uh, his pride, uh, his pride will fall, daddy. Uh, he'll lay it down, uh, and he says, I just want God's will. Uh, that'll be done in my life. Uh, I don't want nobody Rick patting us on the back. Uh, all we want is people say, Brother Kenny, uh, uh, what can I do to convince you uh, uh, to turn to Jesus? Uh, that's what I want to do, daddy. Uh, uh, what can I tell you about the good son of God? Uh, and that would cause you to want uh, uh, to come and be with him. That's what it's about. Because when I come here, Daddy, I want to know uh, that I'm going to get in touch with the Master that day. Uh, Daddy, because no matter who lays their hands on me, uh, no matter who prays for me, and I love it, I thank God for everybody that does, uh, until the Master lays his hands on me. Uh, I've not felt nothing yet. Uh, uh, but when he lays his hands on me, uh, it might be when you lay your hands on me uh, uh, that he lays his hand on me. So lay your hands on me. Uh, if God tells you to, I want you to. Uh, amen. But when Jesus comes down, uh, uh, nobody else in the room, uh, and he lays his hands on you. It'll be like that water uh, sweeping over you, Brother Herman, that you failed. Uh, when your kidney stones disappeared, uh, Daddy, it'll be like the wind that come down in your chest. Uh, amen. When the heart problems left, uh, it'll be that thing that left you uh, that you saw at and didn't know how to fix it. Uh, uh, when the Lord does it, uh, and nobody else don't even have to be in the room. Uh, he can do it for you because he's God. He don't need nobody else. But we all need him, Rick. And we need that foundation to stand on. It's Jesus. Amen. Paul said they're so divided, they're carnal, they're strives, they're envy, they're divisions in them, my man. He said, Oh, they're not yet carnal. Carnally thinking, amen. Come to church, Brother Herman, look and see somebody get saved. Praying, Lord, use me today to help somebody get lifted up, Rick, in the spirit. Amen. I got, I got joy in my heart. I seen Rick getting stirred up. Tammy over here behind the piano speaking in tongues, Rick, too. I doubt that tears me up. Why? Because I know God's coming to the place. Amen. I know he's already here. But I mean, he's making you know he's here. Hey, when you know he's here, it's a whole lot different than just saying he's here. Daddy, when he shows up, Rick, in a big way, and he's takes you, amen, uh, right where you're sitting at, uh, amen, then you know that he's there, uh, and then it makes you so happy, uh, I don't know you're in your father's house, uh, and he came, daddy, too, uh, and he showed up, uh, uh, because God don't dwell in this building, daddy, uh, uh, when I leave, uh, I don't come back here and meet him every Sunday, Rick, uh, I bring his son with me, uh, and my heart, uh, amen, I begin to worship him, and he'll show up, amen, every time. People say, I don't believe you can have it every week. I believe you can have it every week. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there will I be in the midst of them. If you'll gather in the name of Jesus, Rick, he'll be there, amen. He says, I don't know about that. Maybe you'll try a little bit. Maybe you'll try a little bit. Maybe you'll try a little bit. Get your mind on Jesus, amen. And let him touch you and bless you, Amen. I'm going to leave here with something, amen, I didn't come with. I mean, a joy unspeakable and full of glory. I may be coming here, been rolled by the devil all week, Brother Kenny. Been battling, amen. People say, you ought not ride your way. He does at times. Sometimes, Rick, I'm sorry, I put the saddle on. And he beats and bangs all week long, Daddy. Ought not to do that, amen. But have you? can you admit you've done that before? Have you let him ride you before? Have you let him beat on you? I know you have. That means you ain't never got discouraged if you didn't. People say, I've never did that. Have you ever been discouraged? Have you ever been down? Have you ever been depressed? Have you ever felt like giving up? Have you ever felt like throwing in the towel? Have you still know what song to sing? Have you doubted whether I should do something for God or not? When you doubt it, are you listening to somebody else that's telling you don't do it? It ain't God. That's somebody else. Amen. Jesus said go. Amen. Go. Amen. Go and make disciples of men. Amen. What's we going to do to do that? I may have to sing to do that. I may have to preach to do that. I may have to go out and declare his word in the street to do that. But whatever it causes me to do, I'm going to do what he said because the kingdom of God needs more people in it. And they're dying and going to hell every day. And God just said, come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. If they come to Jesus, they get rest. Let's not get divided like other churches or like other people do. Other people come from another church here, Rick. I'm going to invite them in, pray for them, hope that they have the Spirit of God and let them use what God get put in their life to use for Him. Amen. If they're in the will of God, they ain't going to do nothing crazy. If they're in the will of God, they ain't going to do nothing funny. 
And the will of God ain't going to do nothing crazy and do nothing to bring a bad name on you. And, you know, when you go to another church, they ought to treat you the same way with freedom and liberty, Becky, that you can go out to and sing and, and do what God has gifted you to do, amen, to go out and help the body to get stronger, daddy. Maybe that a lost sinner might say, man, these people really do love God because they love each other. You know what? You can tell a church that's divided. A church that don't love each other, they don't love God. Brother Kenny, when they don't love each other enough to give their own self, amen, for the next one, they don't really love God at all. They reckon they don't rather prefer their brother over their self, they don't love God at all. And when they want it all for themselves, Daddy, they don't love themselves. They don't love God at all. Uh, Brother Herman, I hope you can see here that uh, we prefer you over ourselves. Uh, Becky, you're free to sing and play any time you want to. Uh, we want you to. Uh, Brother Kenny, we want you to preach. We don't want you to feel like you're left out. Uh, we want people to obey God. Uh, if God moves on you and you don't do it, it's your fault. Uh, amen. But over here, Daddy, say, come. Uh, worship God. Amen. Lift your hands, young people. Uh, lift your hands, young people, amen, it's all right uh, uh, to praise the Lord even when you're young, uh, amen, even when you're young, amen, it's all right uh, uh, to lift your hands to God, uh, amen, to praise him, amen, uh, he said out of the mouth of babes, uh, he's perfected praise, amen, uh, he's wanting the babes to praise him, daddy, uh, even the young ones, amen, to praise him, amen, uh, and give him a shout of praise uh, uh, because he's, we're fearfully and we're wonderfully made by God, amen, he made us all. He gave us vocal cords. He gave us a voice for a reason, Daddy. He said, let everything and have a breath. Praise you, the Lord. Rick said at times he felt like he wasn't worthy to get up and praise the Lord. Anybody that put their righteousness up to Jesus, none of us wouldn't be worthy. Amen. None of us would be worthy, Brother, Brother Herman, but if we'll just drop our own selves and say, Lord, you said with everything and had a breath to praise you the Lord Rick everything had a breath the thief on the cross said Lord we, we, we're, we're, we're just we're going to get our just judgment but he done nothing to miss he done nothing wrong he was praising Jesus right on the cross he has done nothing wrong this is a just man we're getting what we deserve and that he said Lord remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom Rick and he said this day shall thou be with me in paradise amen uh, you can be with Jesus amen if you want to uh, you got to call out upon Jesus, amen. You gotta call out upon his name, amen, and know that he's the only way, the only truth, the only life, and, and no man can get to the Father, like Rick said, but by him, amen. Ain't nobody can get you to heaven uh, but Jesus, amen. They were saying, I'm of Paul. Uh, they were saying, I'm of I'm Apollos, amen. Uh, and Paul said, I ain't nothing but a sower. Uh, Apollos ain't nothing but a waterer. Uh, it ain't the pastors or something, daddy. Uh, it's Jesus, amen. Uh, people put their eyes on their preachers and on their pastors, and we ought to put good men and women or good men in the office, amen, to preach the gospel, amen. And we ought to put them in office today trusting that they'll do the right thing, amen. But don't never put your faith in confidence and all your hope in your pastor. Daddy, he'll let you down. He'll fail you somewhere along the way. Oh, but Jesus won't ever let you down. He'll always be there, amen. And he won't ever divide you up and say, I like this group a little better than that one. I like that one a little better than that one. Amen, Jesus. Jesus don't want no clicks in the house of God. He don't want no amen corner and an old God corner. He wants everybody to stand and give reference to him all the time the same way because he's the worthy one. I'm a Paul. I'm a Paulus. That's the church today. I'm a, I'm a church, church of the church of God. I'm the Baptist. I'm a Pentecostal, I'm a, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Presbyterian, I'm a, I'm a Catholic. They want to put a name on who they are, thinking that's going to save them, amen. That ain't going to save nobody. Denomination ain't even in the Bible for us. You're Pentecostal, Baptist, and Holiness Church of God. You ought to be holy in your heart with Jesus on your heart, amen. You can't ever have no holiness without Jesus, amen. That's the only way to get it, amen, is get it in your heart. It ain't on your sleeve, daddy. It ain't on your face, amen your head. It's in your heart. If it don't come in here first, you ain't got it anyway. Amen. I don't care, Rick, what people say. I need the foundation, Daddy. I found out that it was Jesus. And I found out if I would come and learn of him, I would find out what he wanted me to do for my life. And when I did that, I could be pleasing unto him. That's what I want to do, Rick, is be pleasing unto him, not unto you. Not unto dad, but unto Jesus. 
Brother Kenny, I might not be pleasing unto you one day, but my goal ain't to please you. My goal is to please Jesus. People get hurt, Daddy, by what people say, what people do. If they got their eyes on Jesus, they don't worry about getting hurt. I just tune them right on out, Daddy. I've heard people say stuff. When you get saved, when you really get saved, you'll cut that hair off your face. When you really get saved, you won't ever say another dirty word. Well, I got news for you. If Rick hadn't reminded me, Daddy, when I got saved, that one of these days you're going to say something you didn't mean to say. I hadn't been saved very long, Rick. And Rick told me, said, now if you get somewhere and you get it by and about and you was to say something you didn't mean to say, he said, don't give up on God. He said, just go pray and tell the Lord you're sorry. Follow Jesus, Daddy. I was at a gas station, Daddy, how long after that. They changed the pumps, Rick, and I couldn't figure out how to work them. I got frustrated, Daddy. And the S word come out. And people says, you are not a sad dad. I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of you said it. And you never ever admitted it. Hey, Amen. I was cussed before I after I got saved, Daddy. I don't cuss and I don't practice it, but I have said it. And I went to Jesus, Brother Kenny, and asked him to forgive me. And I was sorry for it. It hit me like a ton of bricks, Rick. But also the word that you said hit me also, Daddy. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Don't ever let that come out of my mouth again, Lord. I'm sorry. It didn't take my salvation away. It didn't delete who I was in Christ. But it made me feel low as dirt, Daddy. But you know what I knew? I knew I had somebody, Brother Kenny, I could go to. I could trust in. I'm telling you, hey man, your life don't don't consist of the things that you own or possess. Hey man, your life consists in who Jesus says you are and who you put your trust in. People said you ever done anything wrong after you got saved, you wouldn't ever saved. I'm going to tell you something. Some people are still goats in behind the pulpit preaching to people they're trying to make sheep. And they need to get right with God herself because you can't get to Jesus. You can't get to heaven without the foundation. That in Jesus is the foundation. Amen. It ain't Jesus plus the law gets you to heaven. Amen. And Paul talked to him. He said, after you got saved, amen, through the knowledge of God, through the grace, amen. Now, you think that you've been perfected by the law? The law will perfect you. Amen. If you trust it, he said, you've fallen from grace. Amen. And your grace is your faith has come void to you. Amen. I'm not trusting. I know what the law is. I know what it's for, Brother Kenny. But I also know what the grace of God is, Rick. I know what it's done for this boy, Daddy. A drug taker. Amen. A drinker of alcohol. Amen. I wanted to run with people. Amen. I shouldn't be running with. Ended up in places I should not have been. Amen. Smoking drugs and taking them, Daddy. I know what it's all about. But I know what the grace of God is about, too. Amen. I take you from the drinking, Daddy. I take you from cussing your old mama. I take you from doing the deeds you used to do. It will change you day by day, amen, into a man he wants you to be. The Bible said grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't say you was born perfect and you was going to stay that way. You got to grow in this thing. You got to perfect it every day. You got to work on it every day. It's the life we live and we keep it on Christ. Amen. And everything we do, we got to put it up against Christ. And if it's wrong, Daddy, it don't meet the standards of what Jesus says in our heart. The Bible said if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. If your brother condemns you, it don't mean a stinking thing. Amen. You need to let God be the condemner. Amen. If you got Jesus in your heart, Daddy, we ought to pray and say, Lord, what would you have me to do? And let him lead us and guide us. And the Bible said when the spirit of truth has come, he'll guide you into all truth. And whatsoever I've said unto you, if God's word can't lead us, we're following the wrong one. If God's word can't lead me, I'm in the wrong country. I need to be following Jesus or I'm going to be in trouble. When Jesus said straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. He wasn't talking about roads and pathways. He was talking about his word, him being the straight and narrow, him being the way, the truth, and the life. And if you follow anybody else but him, you're on a broad way. I don't care if you're a churchgoer. 
you're a church goer, you think your righteousness is going to get you to heaven, you're following somebody else's path road. The Bible said, by grace are you saved through faith. That not of works, lest any match your boast. It's a gift of God. We're saved unto good works. Yeah, but you can't do it till you get saved. People, Dave, Rick, trying to preach people get the Holy Ghost, they ain't even got saved yet. They try to get them to get the Holy Ghost, they ain't even got saved yet. They don't even understand what salvation is. They think if they put a bunch of clothes on, do a bunch of legalistic acts, they can get everything God wants them to have. And that ain't what it's about, amen. It's about surrendering and submitting yourself unto Jesus, amen. Unless we surrender unto Jesus, day, we ain't never going to get nothing from God. All we're going to do is have a hard time. I, I, I'm pray, I can preach to you something here. And a lot of people get mad in a Pentecostal church. They say you got to pray for months and months to get the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, Paul told them, uh, Jesus told his disciples uh, to go back to Jerusalem till they be endued with power from on high. But Paul met men along the way, Daddy, uh, that wasn't even seeking after the Holy Ghost, Rick. Uh, and he said, have you received the Holy Ghost uh, after you have believed? Uh, and they said, we don't even know if there'll be a Holy Ghost. Uh, well, Paul said, well, go back to Jerusalem and pray for about six months uh, until you be endued with power from on high. No, that ain't what Paul said. Uh, uh, Paul said, and receive ye of the Holy Ghost. And he laid his hands on them, Daddy. And the Bible said, I received the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. If you love God, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Have you been born again? I'll receive ye the Holy Ghost. Have you been washed by the blood of Jesus? I'll receive ye the Holy Ghost. Because if you're saved, you're a candidate for the Holy Ghost. If you ain't been saved yet, get saved and then you'll be a candidate for the Holy Ghost. People says, well, I gotta, I've been seeking address. You better make sure you're saved first because if you ain't saved, you ain't ever going to get it. Now, people can teach you how. They can teach you how to talk in some kind of language. And you can sound just like them, act just like them, and be judgmental just like them. You can live the lifestyle they live and do everything they do. But when you get the Holy Ghost, you don't have to be like him. You don't have to be like nobody else. Jesus made us peculiar people, not peculiar one. He made us peculiar people. We're all a little bit different, Brother Kenny. You act a little different. You worship a little different. Hey, Amen. You lay hands. Kenny gets up when they start singing, Rick. I see him a lot of times. He's shaking his hands and praising God. I don't see a whole lot of people doing that no more, Daddy. He's a peculiar person. Hey, Brother Kenny, that's peculiar. Hey, Amen. Everybody don't act that way, Rick. They ain't supposed to. But you ought to do whatever God gives you to do. Hey, Amen. You ought to speak in tongues. When the Spirit of God gives you utterance, hey, amen. Don't hold back. You ought to prophesy. And the Spirit of God moves upon you to prophesy. You shouldn't quench the Spirit. But go do what God told you to do. Hey, amen. I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people's waiting on something else. And they should be serving God and receiving what God wants them to have, Brother Herman. He's already standing there waiting to give it out. We ain't desiring it. Paul said desire. He said a follow out of charity and the desire spirit spiritual gifts. We ought to desire spiritual gifts and we can't get them if we don't have charity and we don't follow out of love and follow out of mercy and we can't forgive our fellow brother or our sister and we can't ever get what God wants us to have. People's trying their way, every way to try to get something from God and they're so divided and they can't figure out how to get it, Brother Kenny. You get it by being one with God and being one with the body. When we become one, the Bible said on the day of Pentecost, they were all one. One mind, one accord. And the Bible said there suddenly came a sound of heaven as a rush and a mighty wind. And it filled the room where they were sitting. Amen. They came together. Amen. They were praying. And the God began to pour out the Spirit of the Holy Ghost upon them. The Holy Ghost came down and began to baptize them. And they all began to speak in different tongues. They all had different tongues, Rick. It was different people there coming. Amen. They come to them all, all around this tax time. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, and they had to come. And they were, I guess, just different taxpayers, maybe worshipers, whatever they were. How they came there and they said, Did we not hear all these men speaking in our language? Amen. All these different nationalities. Oh, but these are just Jewish people. Oh, these are just Jews. What are they doing knowing our language? 
language for. Uh, while they speak in this, uh, but you know what I once said? Uh, once said they do. Uh, I talk about the wonderful works of God. Uh, amen. They do talk about the wonderful works of God. Uh, that's what the tongues was doing, Rick. Uh, he was talking about the wonderful works of God. Uh, you know what the tongues are going to do? Uh, it's going to bless God, uh, and it's going to help you too. Uh, amen. Don't think when you get the Holy Ghost, uh, it's to put on a show uh, or pat yourself on the back. Uh, it's for the edification. Uh, it's so God can edify your soul uh, so you can have a direct line with God uh, and the devil can't interfere in it. Uh, he don't even know what you're saying uh, uh, when you're speaking that uh, uh, because you're speaking directly to God and you don't need nobody else to know what you're saying. But it's for us. It's for the church, Dad. It's for the body. It's for us. But you got to be in the body before you can get it. I've seen people, Rick, I wonder what they believe in them. Then when they tell them they need the Holy Ghost, they're not sure if they even believe Jesus is the way or not. And they're trying to get something he's got. Best I understand, Daddy, Jesus was the, baptize, baptize, the, the Holy Ghost baptizer. Last time I looked, the Bible said, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jesus said he would do it. John said Jesus would baptize you. He didn't say somebody else would do it. Some, now, I know Paul laid his hands on them. They received it, but Paul ain't the one to give it to them. God gave it to them. Jesus gave it to them. Dad. It wasn't Paul that gave it to them. Paul already had the vision. I'm not the one doing this thing. I'm just sowing and I'm just watering. I'm doing what God told me to do. When I do what God tells me to do, God will do his part. And I don't need to know what I think about it, Dad. Just do what God, because people says, well, I, I would do that, but I don't know if God will react when I go do that. I, I would go lay my hands on that person, but they might not shout when I lay my hands on them. So people think I'm a phony. I, I would go pray for them, but because God told me to, and they got a tumor on their body. I know about it, but I might not hear them say I'm healed, so I better not go. So if God says go, would it be better to go? Or would it be better to sit there? Because you might be the one that's needing something from God. And God may be saying, would you go and do something for me so I can go and do something for you? Will you do it for me? I've already done something for you. I've already died for you on Calvary. I already shed my blood for you. What else do I need to do to get you to go? And do something for me. People, Brother Herman, I'll do anything for God. Well, go pray for your brother over there sitting in the corner that's so low. Well, God, I can't do that. But you just said you'll do anything for him. We'll do anything that makes me look good. I'll do anything that gets me a pat on the back. I'll do anything to get people to believe in me. I don't need you to believe in me. Matter of fact, you shouldn't be believing in me. You should be believing in Jesus. Because you believe in me, I could fail you tomorrow. I could be laid up in a motel with some whore tomorrow. I'm going to tell you what could be happening to a fleshly man. People say, you ought not to say that. I'm going to tell you something. You're going to fight this flesh. You're going to either let it win or you're going to beat it. You're going to love your wife or you ain't. You're going to love your spouse or you ain't. You're going to love your church or you ain't. You're going to love Jesus or you ain't. The devil's going to try you every day to see if you will. He wants to know where your heart really lies at, Rick. Where was your great secret at? He preached about Samson last week. Where's that great secret at? Where's that great secret at? Amen. Amen. Talk about that one. Talk about this. And all he's wanting to do is destroy. All he's wanting to destroy our faith. All he wants to destroy is our fellowship, Daddy. Cause division in the church. As long as we can keep the division out of our churches, Rick, and keep unity in here, we can see things being done here, Daddy. People on the Internet going to get saved. I'm telling you right now, they're going to come here, Rick, and say, listen to the preaching of the gospel of, of Jesus Christ, and I want to come, and I want to let you know I got saved. They don't got to come and stay, Daddy. I'm going to tell you there's going to be people, Rick, that's going to walk in this door, and they're going to say, I got born again because you preached Jesus to me. And man, that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a pat on the back. I just want to know what God said to do is the right thing. I'm a doing it, Daddy. He said, preach the word. I'll be instant in season, out of season. I'm a reprove, rebuke, exhort, and I hope suffering in doctrine. I'm, he said, for the time will come I'm, I'm, when they want to endure sound doctrine. Amen. I'm, you tell people to fall in love with Jesus. I'm, I'm, it takes more than that. I'm, I'm, you tell me somebody's fell in love with Jesus. I'm, if there's anything any better. I'm, a little woman that broke to the last master box, Rick, I'm, and pulled out an ornament on Jesus, Daddy. I'm, I'm, she gave that alabaster box. I'm, I'm, they teach it as maybe about a, a year's worth of 
the wages. And when she poured that up on Jesus, amen, Judah, sitting there, and he said, Lord, why is this great waste made? He didn't love Jesus. Oh, but she did. And that tells on her right there, Daddy. And because she poured it all out on the King of Kings and on the Lord of Lords, and it'll never be forgotten what that little woman did for Jesus that day. Never be forgotten what she did. We're still telling it today. We just did. It'll be told about again what the little woman did. Don't tell me what you do for God will be forgotten about. It won't be forgotten. The little woman in the Bible was gathering the sticks that she ain't forgotten about. She didn't let her meal barrel go dry. She ain't forgotten about. She's still been told about today because she trusted God. When you trust Jesus, amen, you ain't never going to be forgotten. This world may forget about you, but I don't worry what this world thinks about. The world ain't going to heaven no way. The born-again believers in Christ Jesus is who's going to heaven, Daddy. Who are those people? Them has been washed in the blood. Those accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, repented and followed him. Jesus said, with the heart men believe unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart... Not with the mind, not with the head, with the heart men believe unto righteousness. Brother Kenny, I can't just get it in your head and get you saved. I got to get it in your heart. Rick talked about getting saved here. I, may, may, I guess he was talking about it on that video too. Before he ever got up here to the front, he knew the Lord saved him because his heart had already got changed by him. Like Paul talked about Saul's heart being changed and different people's hearts being changed. Judas in the Bible, his heart got changed. The devil come to his heart right there. Took him right away. Took him to go get the silver. Took him to get the money. Took him to go betray. When your heart gets changed by God, you can forsake that and go follow Jesus. It has to be in our heart, Brother Kenny. Can't be in our mind. Brother J.R. McMahon, I love it, little, little fella. He just he got always full of joy. He used to pastor. Outreach Baptist Church. I used to go our son with him and be on the radio broadcast with him. Daddy was such a joy to be around. He is a big joke. You like to cut up all the time, Rick, but he was serious when we got behind the pulpit talking about Jesus. He said, I'm afraid a lot of people's going to miss heaven by about 12 inches from their head to their heart. They're going to miss it by about that much, Brother Kenny, because they got it in their mind, but they ain't got it in their heart that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way to get there. Paul talked about on over here in Corinthians a little farther. I'll read a little bit more. Lord, help us. So neither is he that planteth anything, and neither is he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. See, this is where all together we're supposed to be as one. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his, his own labor. For we are the light, we are labors together. This has been mentioned in church several times today. Together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I've laid the foundation and another build thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For no other foundation can be, can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now if any man build upon the foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, Hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. I begin to think about that right there a little bit, Rick, and I begin to think about, I believe it's in the book of Matthew, I think, maybe. Maybe in John, I can't remember for sure, but he's talking about the tars and the wheat. And they wanted to pluck up the tars because somebody had sowed some tars in among the weak, Daddy. They wanted to pluck them up. And they said, let us go in there and pluck them tars up. <clears throat> yeah. Cause damage to the wheat. Cause choke them out. Don't want them to grow together. But the master said, no, leave them alone. We're going to let them grow up together. And I'm going to send the reapers at the harvest time. And then they're going to reap out the tars. And they're going to bundle them up. And they're going to cast them in the fire. And he was going to gather up the wheat himself. Take it in. God knows who's who. It ain't my job, Rick, to pick out who's right with God and who ain't. My job is to stand on the foundation and know I am who I am. 
That's my job, Daddy, to know who I am in Christ. Not to know who you are in Christ. I know the Bible said, know them and labor among you and count them and esteem them highly for the work's sake. We're supposed to esteem them and lift them up, people who work with us. But you know what? I ain't my job to pick out each person and tell them whether or not they're worthy for God or not. You're supposed to search out your own soul salvation in the fear and tremble of the Lord. You're supposed to work it out yourself. Becky, I ain't supposed to come in here every week and decide whether somebody's got something on. It's approval or not for God. I ought to come in here with my mind on Jesus, my heart on him, Daddy, and begin to praise him and worship him and everything out of God. God can reveal it his own self. He can touch people. He can change people's hearts. He don't need to ring me to ring those sheep's ears off, Daddy. Rick, he don't need to get me getting those sheep's in a headlock and tell them, if you don't do this, God don't love you. Don't need me, Lord, to bash them and tell them, Rick, that God don't care for them because they didn't do it the way I did it. To, I, I, you, if you, when you get like me, you'll have it right because I ain't, maybe not have it right all the time. Right? Sometimes I need some help. Sometimes I need some correction. Sometimes I need somebody to preach to me the word of God to help me, Daddy, so I don't got no right to be plucking up no tars. Amen. Among the weed, all I can do is pray for the goats, Daddy, that they become sheep. Amen. You say, how do they do that? By the word of God. Through Jesus, Daddy, when I tell them that Jesus Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. And I tell him that he came to this earth, uh, born of a virgin, amen, that he come, uh, and he lived a sinless life, uh, and he died for your and my sins. Uh, he went to a whipping post. Uh, he bore the sins of us. He bore our, our affinities, our, our infirmities on the cross. Uh, he bore all what we had, amen, all, all of our sicknesses. He took and he was bruised. He was beaten. He was broken, and he took all that rig, not for himself. He didn't do no wrong. He did done no wrong, uh, amen. He hadn't done no sin. Uh, 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 became sin for us, amen. Uh, amen, he became sin, the Bible said. Uh, uh, Jesus, yes, he became sin uh, uh, for you and me. Uh, uh, so I might take his righteousness. Uh, uh, how did he do that? Uh, he took that sin uh, on that cross, daddy, uh, and they nailed it to him uh, uh, when they nailed it on the cross. Uh, and then they took him down from that cross uh, and they stuck him in that borrowed tomb. Uh, and when he got up, uh, he left the sin behind. Uh, uh, when he got up, he left your death behind. When he got up, he left your adultery behind. When he got up, he left your thieving behind. When he got up, he left your lying behind. When he got up, he left your cheating behind. When he got up, he left it all in the grave. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He left it there. He didn't take that back to heaven with him. He left it in the ground. He buried it. Our sins, he said, was buried. They're buried where they get buried at. They got buried when he went in that tomb. And he buried our sins in that tomb. Amen. And when he rose up, amen, he even told them, he said, don't touch me yet. I've not ascended to my father. He ascended back to his father, daddy. Amen. With that glorified body, come back, Rick, to this earth. He would say, come back. Yeah, he came back. He come back again. And he walked around down here. And people says, well, I can't hardly believe that. Well, Paul said many of them seen him. Many of them are asleep right now that saw him. And Paul said he saw him one born out of due season on the road to Damascus. Amen. He was a sinner. He was having people killed. And Jesus began to speak to him from heaven and said, Paul, Paul, why persecutest thou me? Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said, Lord, what would you have me do? He said, I told him what he would do. Go out here. Go to one named Ananias. He told him it was many things he had to suffer for his name's sake. Ananias, daddy, was a man of God. And he told Ananias, there's a man coming your way. His name is Paul. Or his name is Saul. But he's going to get changed. I want you to pray for him. And you know what he said? This is a man of God, daddy. He goes, I've heard of him. He kills people. He puts people in jail. He would like to pluck up the tars in the wheat right there if he had a chance, Rick. I heard about him. Yeah, the devil said something in my ear about him. A word has got around about him. That's the problem today. Too many people yakking about him and yakking about her. Instead of listening to what God said and let them do what God told them to do, we say, I heard something about them. Amen. They put people to sleep. They have Christians killed. They used to be out in a bar. They used to be out in adulterous affair. They used to steal. I heard about them. But Jesus said, or Paul told them, or Jesus told us, Ananias, but he prayed. He prayed. But I didn't see that, Jesus, so I can't believe it. I can't see it. Kenny, so I can't let him in the pulpit. I didn't see him pray. So I can't let him do what you want him to do. 
Guess what? It wasn't Ananias' choice whether he could do what God told him to do. God said, as much he must suffer for my name's sake. Ananias had enough of God to know who God was. And when he came to his door, he brought him in, laid hands on him, called him Brother Paul, prayed over him, Daddy, said the scales fell from his eyes. Hey, Amen. I didn't hear no word where Paul went to an altar and prayed. I don't hear where Paul had to get six weeks in before he decided he was ready or not for God. When Jesus spoke, he done what Jesus said, and that was confirmation. Faith come by hearing, hearing from the Word of God. When God speaks to you and you go and do what it said, that is faith. That is faith. Daddy, people trying to get people saved without faith, without the Word of God. Come and do what we do. Come and act like us. If you put the right clothes on, God will save you. You do the right deeds, God will save you. Nobody gets saved without going in their heart to Jesus and asking Jesus to forgive them of their sin. It ain't an act, a deed that people tell you to do. It ain't a ritual. It ain't a say these words after me kind of thing. It ain't a repeat these weird words after me. You can be saved. You better repeat your own words. You better tell them from your own heart. Lord, I want to follow you. Lord, I'm going to follow you. Jesus, if you're on that foundation, Brother Kenny, people won't knock you off. You may let down on God, and you may even throw in the towel at times. But guess what you know where the foundation is, don't you? You know where the foundation is. Rick said he got away from the Lord for a while there, Brother, Brother Herman. He knew where the foundation was, though, didn't he? He knew who to go stand on a trust in, even when times was hard, even when we messed up or done the wrong, made the wrong decisions. It's good to know who the foundation is. It's good to know who will forgive you. good to know who will protect you, who will take you. Who will never tell you, I don't love you. Who will never say, get away from me, you know, good for nothing thing. You People will do that to you, Dad. People throw you out of your church because you don't have the right clothes on. They'll throw you out of church because you don't agree with their what they believe. Well, Brother Kenny, I'm sure everybody in this room has something they may not all agree on. I have you something we can't agree on. That's the foundation, being Jesus. And when we can come in that kind of agreement, Daddy, we can come here and worship Jesus, trust in Brother Kenny, pour our hearts out to him, love him, and we can love each other. We don't have to be divided, Rick. We can be as one. The Bible said a threefold cord is not easily broken. If you want to put the devil to flight, get God in the room. Get Jesus in here. When we come together and not be scattered, Daddy. Jesus will work in our midst. He was working here earlier, but he was a moving, and I appreciate the Lord for coming and touching all that he did. Tammy, if you want to come to the piano, I don't have no right to tell somebody they're saved or not saved. But they have the right themselves to examine themselves and see if they be in the faith. Jesus said, search the scriptures for them. You think you have eternal life. And these are they that testify of me. They think they have eternal life. I don't want to think I got it. I want to know I got it. Because when you come time to die, say you're about to have a heart attack. They give people these days nitroglycerin pills, Daddy, and they tell them to carry them when they got heart problems. And they give them heart attack pills, Rick, and if they'll take a heart attack, when they feel like a heart attack's coming on, it does something to their heart. I don't really understand what it does, but it does something to it. I'd hate to be one of them heart patients running down the road, Daddy, hoping I had my nitroglycerin pill with me when my heart began to fail me. Well, I think I got it with me. If I was a heart attack patient and that's the only way to keep me alive, Daddy, if my heart began to start thumping, I'd know I had it with me. I would take care of that. I'd be sure it was with me where I went. That's why we ought to treat Jesus. I know he's with me. I know he's going to go with me where I go. I don't wonder if he's going to take me to heaven. I don't want to guess. Well, I hope I live good enough to get to heaven. I hope you trusted in the blood of Jesus for your salvation. And just live the best you can live because that's the least you can do. That's the least you can do. But you better trust in the blood of Jesus or you will not go to heaven 
I don't care what denomination you go to. I don't care if you're Catholic. I don't care if you're Presbyterian. I don't care if you're Methodist. I don't care if you're Baptist. I don't care if you're Church of God. I don't care if you're Church of Christ. I don't care if you're Pentecostal. I don't care if you're Holiness. Holiness three times over. Whatever your church name is on the door. If you ain't been born again by the blood of Jesus and washed by his blood, Daddy, you will not go to heaven. But the foundation of God stands sure. Having a seal, he said, the Lord knew them was his. And let everyone name the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Dad, if I love you, I shouldn't be trying to find fault in you. Rick, I shouldn't be trying to find fault in you. Brother Kenny, I shouldn't be trying to find fault in you. Daddy, I should be able to see every way I can to build you up, to lift you up, to get you stronger in God where you can go another mile on this journey that sometimes becomes hard to walk because the devil, like Rick said, presses so hard as soon as you get up out of the bed in the morning. He wants to take you down. He wants to tell you why you ain't worthy. And he'll never, like Rick said, tell you anything good. He'll never tell you no good things. Or you got good things ahead of you if you follow Jesus. He'll tell you all the reasons why you ought to stop following him. And the Bible tells me that he's a liar and the father of it, Rick. And he'll never bold in the truth. As Tammy plays, I want to open up the altars, which are always open. I invite you to pray if you wish to come and pray. If you're lost, if you thought you were saved in your mind but didn't know it in your heart, if you didn't trust in Jesus for your salvation, you can pray at your seat and be saved. You can come to an altar and be saved. You can be in your home and be saved. You can be in your jail cell and be saved. You can be in the hospital bed and get saved. You can be in the nursing home and get saved. You can be in your church watching it, in your seat and be saved. But you've got to believe in Jesus with all of your heart all your soul, your strength, and your mind. Believe that God had raised him from the dead, Rick. A lot of people has died. Daddy. A lot of people that they call gods have died. There's people in other countries, they got them in bombing fluid. They call them their gods. They're embalmed. And people go by and they lay their hands on their embalming casket and they weep over them, Daddy, and cry over their dead God. I don't got to weep over my dead God. My God ain't dead. He's alive forevermore, Daddy. Jesus said, I'm he that liveth and was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and hell. I cry because I'm thankful that he has me in his hands, Brother Kenny. We don't come in here and pray over Jesus because we're sorry that he's dead. We pray because we're glad that he rose again and that he's coming back, Daddy, one day to get us. Amen. And he's gone right now to prepare a place for us. The eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and neither has it in the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But he said he's revealed it to us by his spirit. We get a little glimpse of what God's got, Rick. I don't really, your, your view of what it may look like may look a little different than my view. But I know one thing I've never seen in heaven's view. I've never seen no hell in it. Never seen no devil in it nowhere, Daddy. Never seen the deceiver nowhere in that land. Nowhere I ever looked that street ago did I ever see God talking to Satan up there nowhere. Never seen him in that city, Daddy. The new one, he's not going to be in it. He was in the heaven before. But he said, Behold, I make a new heaven and a new earth where in dwelleth righteousness. Amen. That's the city we want to go to. The one where the devil has never been and never will ever be. Tammy, you can go ahead and play. We're going to pray. If you'll stand with us, we're going to have altar call. You can come and play. You can play music, whatever you feel led to do. I'm going to pray over our people on the internet to watch. Maybe there's somebody sitting in their living room right now, Daddy. It might be lost. We may have some of our lost kin folks, Rick. It might be sitting there watching us. We need to let them know that Jesus loves them. I want them to know it ain't no act or deed that somebody else has told you to get you saved. But it's coming and bowing yourself before the Lord Jesus Christ and submitting unto him and letting him be your Lord and Savior. That's what salvation is. Without that, no matter what we do after that, get us saved. We need Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, God. I praise you, Lord. I thank you for letting me keep my voice long enough, Lord, to preach. God, I thank you, Lord, for your mercy that you keep on us every day, Lord, and you overshadow us with your goodness, God. Thank you for this service, Lord, to sing and for letting us be able to preach a little bit, Lord. We're least of all today, God. We're, we're nothing, Lord. I pray you'd help us to be a better preacher, Lord. Be a better order. Be someone better can speak the word of God more plainly, Lord, to people, God. 
But God, I pray for that soul out there right now that's listening. God, by the sound of our voice, maybe watching on the internet, Lord. Father, may watch it later this week. God, I pray for their soul today, God, that you would, Lord, come down to the room where they're at with the Holy Ghost, God, that you would draw them by your spirit today, God. Father, let them know that your son Jesus today is the way, the truth, and the life, God. Let them begin to see, Lord, that through him is the only way we can get saved, God, through trusting in the blood of Jesus, God. God, I pray that you reveal unto them, Lord, the true gospel, Lord, that Jesus is the only way. God, I pray for their hearts right now, God, that you'll touch them. Let them know that they are the reason that he came to this earth, God, to bleed and die for their souls, for theirs and mine and everyone that would believe, God. And you said, Lord, it wasn't your will that any would perish, Lord, but that all would come to repentance, God. And God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would touch them. Let them know that you love them, God. Let them call upon you, Lord, and let them receive the gift of salvation, God. And then, Lord, let them come and let us know by some means that they've believed in you, Jesus, and they've turned and followed you and received salvation, God. And Lord, we ask, God, that you touch every believer that's in here with us today, God, that you help them, strengthen them, Lord, everyone that's watching by the way of the Internet, God, every believer that watches us, God, I pray for them, God, in the name of Jesus, that you strengthen their soul, strengthen their spirit, Lord, strengthen their mind, strengthen their walk, Lord, for you today, God, to be the best example of a Christian, God, that we could all be, Lord, that we might lead people to your kingdom, Lord. Rick may be sowing, Lord. Dad may be watering. I can never give the increase. It's up to you, Lord. You have to give the increase, God. We ask, Lord, that you would increase today, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Thank you, Lord.
Oh, baby. 